What do you say, everybody? Welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel as we watch the 8A game. We're jumping on now for the Bama Tailgate post game. We're doing it in the fourth quarter. Uh, and we're going to kind of just give your our thoughts on this game and what we're seeing from Alabama. Get in the comments section. Tell us what you guys think. And let's get this party started. But thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we've got the game on here. And we're going to talk about it. So roll tide, everybody. What do you say, everybody? Oh, look, there he is. Big, sexy Elmo from WJLX. I'm Mick Gillespie. Uh, 8A game going on right now. This is our fourth quarter 8A game coverage, right? I figured that's what we'd call it. And um, this thing's going to be over soon. The offense has absolutely pistol whipped the defense today. It, it's been, uh, to me, Brett, uh, a lot of offense. Milrose looked great. Ty Simpson has looked great. The receivers have looked faster than the defense. The running backs have looked great. The offensive line has looked great. And the defense looks like they're playing in quicksand, although they are back within uh, 34 to 18, all of that in the second half. So um, yeah, should I be concerned? Talk me out of this. I'm, I, I'm not real happy with what we're seeing on defense. I'm not thrilled on what we're seeing on defense. Six, three and outs, though, have accounted for the – the points. Um, it's like three, right? Three points every. Yeah, three three points for the the three and outs. Uh, Brown almost had an interception uh, earlier in this uh, quarter. Uh, do you think that it was him... intensity, or do you think that it's just that the offense is that much better? Uh, the radio coverage uh, uh, they said on the sideline report that they had a the defensive unit had to come to Jesus meeting right before halftime. And, and uh, I think they should have had that like right before the game. Did Jesus because, tell them to like pick up the intensity? Uh, apparently so. I, I would hope so. <laughs> uh, man, I tell you, uh, yeah, yeah, pistol whipping is, is probably the best term. Um, the, I mean, the positives, you're right. I mean, the offense looks pretty good. Um, not concerned with that. I did see a, a bad snap or two. I think what I was caused by a penalty, but I have to throw that in there. Right. Uh, but uh, no, the, I mean, the offense looks uh, head and shoulders better than the defense. And uh, the defense just scored three more points though. It's 34, 21. Um, I, I, and, but, but my initial thought was watching this opening half and, and I, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if anybody else feels this way. But seeing Coach Saban there and seeing him in the um, in the suite and seeing the way our defense played there in the first half, man, it made me depressed. I I, I was I, look, I'm all for DeBoer, but man, I, I really miss Coach Saban today. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we <laughs> we're not used to watching I mean, a defense, but you you got to remember we lost all those guys in the secondary. Caleb gosh. Downs not only was he a freshman All American. But he was also the leading tackler on the team, right? You lose yeah. Kool Aid and Terry on Arnold to the draft. You had all of those other guys that transferred Amos and Kite and Pope, and um, you know, and the list goes on and on to different programs. And it just feels like, I, you know, I thought that the defensive line would be a lot better than they played in that first half. Um, and with the transfer portal opening on Monday, even Nick Saban said it, 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 you know, on TV at the halftime, you know, Hey, look, you know, there's that, that, you know, kind of exp that the transfer portals there to get better. Um, but the, it, it looked like to me, Brett, that first half Alabama's defense looked like watching Florida state play Georgia in that orange bowl. Like yeah. no one wanted to tackle. Everyone looked slow, and the offense was like at a different pace. Yeah, and is that by design? I don't know. Uh, but 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 like you said off the air, I mean, uh, that, I mean they just didn't look very good overall. But I mean, you can't design it to where you just play horrible, right? Uh, you know, 
How about the catches? I like Bernard, man. I mean, like. Oh, man, he's going to be a player. Woo! Yeah. He's, a little push he's, off he's, on he's the one player. pass catch, but I, I still, yeah, he's he's a baller, man. He's a baller. Uh, Throwing to the tight ends, man, I like that. And uh, uh, running backs look strong. Um. I mean, offensively, I mean, you you know, pretty good marks, but you would expect this from a coach like Caleb DeBoer, who's an offensive mind. Uh, Ty Simpson looked good. Yeah, yeah. he's The speed of the game was something that he struggled with, and he's picked it up. And I think that is a good thing for Alabama. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, who's uh, who's in at quarterback now? Is that uh, – that? I think it's Lauder again. Right or is that is that uh, Mac? Uh, I think that's Mac. Yeah, I think that's Mac that's in there right now. Mac's the only guy that really, to me, hasn't looked great at QB, yeah, and he's getting sacked right now. But yeah, it is Mac, and he is. I think that Milrose looked great, Simpson looked great, Lauderman looked good, and then Mac looks like he's just trying to get it figured out right now. My just, you know. From- well, I mean, that's what this is for, and there's there's. Two more points for the, I think, defense. I think that's two points for a sack. Maybe three. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would love to hear what folks have uh, have to say in uh, ah, low snaps. Yeah. I know. Folks, uh, get in the comments section and, and tell us what you think because it, I, um, I, I guess we're kind of uh, tuned into uh, that center situation, and, and now we're just looking for any imperfections. On the snaps now, right, Mick? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one's perfect, but no. I it, it hasn't stuck out to me like the defense in the first half. Yeah, looks so slow. Um, and and maybe it is intensity. I mean, they've been a lot better in the second half. But you wouldn't have wanted if you were a coach for your defense to just get absolutely pummeled in this game, right? And it was what was it like thirty one zip? Yeah, it was 31 zip. And uh and you may even call plays that are kind of like, hey man, you know what? We <laughs> we oh, there's a missed field goal. One of those, we, yeah, well, that's, that's something that, we have. That's another seen. thing. Yeah, another thing is the kicking game. Uh, of course, we lost our all-star kicker. And uh yeah, he hooks that one to the right. Plenty of lag, but the young man just couldn't. Uh, so now it's getting it. close. If the defense ends up winning this game, the the Crimson, uh, it, it, it's a travesty because I mean, they really were just dominated so much in the first half. And I guess you play two halves of football, but it just feels like the second half's been more of a, hey, we're, you know what we're trying to do here is we don't want to see our defense just get. Uh, you know, absolutely bum rushed. Um, but good to see you, C. Bam, and all you guys as well in the comments section. Uh, you know, jumping in and uh, give us a big roll tide as you hang out. But what do you guys think? You know, what what are your thoughts on on this game? I, I mean, is it or Brett and I? Uh, we, I think we both kind of felt the same way. Like, uh oh, it wasn't. Hey, the grit, the offense is so great. It felt more like, geez, this defense got some trouble. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we were talking about, uh, and you could tell that here within the first like two or three series, you were like, uh, I think I messaged you, and I said either the offense is really, really, really good, or the defense is really bad. Right. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, they were just the offense was ripping the defense to shreds uh, early in the game. But I don't know, Mick. Like you say, it was thirty-one nothing, and um, uh, I think I texted you and said, "You think they turn up the defense in the second half?" You know, if you script this thing right, uh, you know, like I say, the defense, uh, or like you just said, the defense is uh, gaining some steam here. Yeah, but I, I, I really, I mean, maybe I, I just kind of feel like they're dialing it back on, on the defense because they don't want them to look bad. Could be it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause you, you're yeah, kind uh, of at yeah. a spot where you're like, man, I, I don't want our defense to look like, you know, like these guys can't tackle. Um, yeah. With, with yeah. that said though, you know, part of it too, is when you get it in these exhibition games, 
yeah. you, 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 you know, you worry about, you don't want to get anyone hurt, you know? And it's like, it's hard to, um, you know, it's, it, it's hard to play with that kind of intensity when you're, you're at the same time, you're not, you, you know, you don't want to get anybody hurt in a, in a game yeah, like this. I think I've seen one big hit in this ball game. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, and I forgot who it was. I, I wrote it down somewhere and I think I left my notes in there, but anyway, um, now when you, when you play a spring game like this, uh, yeah. Number one thing is, is, is not get anyone hurt. And number two is you don't want to give away anything to your opposition. Remember, this is the only nationally televised spring game in the country this year. Right. Um, and you know, it may be a good thing that some people may walk away and say, golly, these guys don't look very good. Um, look, you got, you've got a portal, you got a portal and you've got summer to work out and you've got fall camp. Um, I will reserve my judgment until that first week, but, but take a look at that crowd, Mick, um, Chris Stewart, uh, uh, on the radio side announced that it was, uh, the official attendance folks through the door, 72,000 plus. Yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, Washington stadium, uh, where the Huskies play, they, uh, they, they it could only hold 70,000 people. So you, you had more people at a, at a, at a spring game than you did, a, you know, any type of, regular season game there in Washington doesn't surprise me. Bama fans are the best. We, you know, we know yeah. that since forever. I mean, even before Saban got there and again, showing up, showing out, supporting DeBoer and the program. Um, is that Jam Miller? Yeah. Somebody asked about Jam Miller or were they asking about Ju oh, Justice Haynes? I don't know. I mean, I, I I've just yeah. seen them as they've come in. Right. Yeah. Jam Miller looks good. Richard Young looked good. <laughs> like those running backs look so fast. Yeah, they are fast. So now it's like a nine point ball game. Watch Milro. You know, put a dart. Nice catches. Have you noticed uh, the walkie talkie that the guy? With a walkie-talkie, is that the in helmet? I don't know. System? Because he's talking on the um, on the headsets, the assistant coaches, but also talking with a walkie-talkie. Hey, what if they did just for this game? The white team wore white helmets with the crim with crimson numbers just <laughs> for this game. You're, you're, you you want that white helmet so bad you could taste it. Well, look, it would be such a contrast. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and everyone would want to play on the white team. Yeah, just uh, just for this game, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, boy, Milrow, he's he's pissed off about something, isn't he? I think he wants to get some points there. Um, Brett Jarman says, like to see the receivers catching the ball. Yeah, Bernard, a couple really Good nice grief. catches. Prentice yeah. had a nice catch, like. Uh, and Milrose had some good balls too. I mean, he's he'll yeah. step up in the pocket and wing it. And Ty Simpson, big big step up from last year. You people have talked about that. I heard it coming out of practice. Hey, keep an eye on what Ty Simpson's doing right now because the light bulb has come on. And it and I think it's obvious. I think you can tell that the light bulb has come on. Do you think this is uh, going to be a, a tight race to uh, opening day? No. No, no, no. Milrose, it's going to be no, Milrose's no. job. It's Milrose's job, and it's his to lose. But, but, um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people think that Simpson will end up being the starting quarterback there, but I, I don't, uh, I don't know. They both look good today, and, and, yeah. and I'm encouraged because you never know what's going to happen, Mick. You know, it's the next man up. Yeah. Well, that uh, I, mean, I feel, yeah. I feel confident in, in both of those guys, really. One of the biggest issues I had with some of the offensive coordinators at Alabama was not taking advantage of the roster that Alabama has. You know, why wasn't Milrow in the game plans 
back when Bryce Young was there? Why didn't we use his ability to run the ball? You know, when Alabama played Michigan, you remember them bringing in uh, their backup quarterback, a guy that could run and letting him run, you know, and it helped them win some games, you know, just a different look. Uh, the creativity could have been a lot better in the past. And I think it cost Alabama in games like LSU a couple of years ago, where if they would have been a little more creative on, on offense, they might've been able to get a little separation and would have won instead of losing in overtime. You know, the Auburn games that they lost, I kind of feel the same way, but, uh, all of a sudden, look, I got to take the score down again and change it here. Uh, the defense is on a roll, man. And they're, they're getting back in this game. It's for steak and beans. Who's going to get the beans and who's going to get that steak? They'll start playing hard now. There we go. <laughs> hey, look, man, I, I'll tell you what. Ty Simpson just looks different. He really he looks. Not. He just looks different. He looks like a, a guy who is uh, the light bulbs come on. Stands back in that pocket and he. Man, what a throw. And here's uh, that's, that's Bur Bur uh, Bernard again. And thank Bernard. you, Kentu, for the uh, or Quante for the, the super chat. Man, really appreciate it. And you're right, I think it's Milro this year and Simpson next. And I, I could definitely see him starting to kind of put himself in that spot. Uh, you can't take Milro's like. I, it would take him. Milrow would have to have a terrible spring, and Simpson would have to just absolutely outplay him for him not to get the the starting job. Look at that run right there. I mean, no one even wanted to touch him. I mean, he hit the hole, and here's another one: the Jam Miller. I mean, like where he's just running over everybody, just running past him, over him, around him. Jam Miller, seven carries, 77 yards, and two touchdowns today. He reminds me of someone that we that that's played in the past, but I can't put my finger on it. Shad, uh, Shad, uh, what was Shad's last name? Shad Williams. Uh, you remember him? Real fast, good running back. Yeah. Wasn't a, it was like a Shula guy, but man, he could he could play. I think I erased the Shula years out of my memory. <laughs> uh, yeah, really, where where has Haynes been? I, I he might be chipped up a little bit, and they didn't put him in the game, and they just didn't say anything. Um, it's a deep ball, and yeah, no one there. Hey, good to see uh, Drake Kirkpatrick on the sideline and see his son in the games. Man, isn't that something? Yeah. Great Kirk comment Patrick. here. They're playing vanilla for a reason. Yeah, I, I, I believe that too. It's just uh, they don't want to show a whole lot. Nate Oates in the house. I've got that same polo. <laughs> So is the Crimson team a team? Yeah, man. Look at Nate. Guy's legit. The drop ball. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hero of the uh, of the campus. I'm behind you for some reason. But um, well, what I'll so tell you is be, this: is that another stop on defense and another yeah, that, complete pass? Yeah. So that's three more points for the Crimson, unless they go for it, and they're not going to go full, go for it on fourth and eighteen. Yeah, three points for the defense. That's 34-29. How much time's left? Do we have any idea? I have no idea. Is that it? That may be it. I think yeah, that's I think it. That's it. I think that's it. I think they're gonna Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I I I'm gonna tell you guys this. First off, um, I don't like the format. You I know, don't either. I, I just can't I, I gotta tell you, final. I, I want to know what the hell is going on in the game. And, uh, you know, I, I don't even, like when I, don't I think... go to gymnastics, Brett, I never know what's going on. I just like, oh, everybody's cheering. And then you wait for the score to come up. I, I don't want that in football. What I want is I want to know this is how you score points. Um, and it, 
I, I, I don't even know that the second half defense was because the defense was doing it or, or Alabama was just kind of dialing it back because I, I'm still sitting on the fact that I just didn't like the way that that defense looked in the first half. Well, I don't think that uh, DeBoer is sold on this format either. I think he did this for a reason. I think we'll change formats here in the future. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm keeping my ear on the radio because we're going to have the MVP award announced here in a second. It's got to be it's got to be Jam Miller. But the board talking right now about it and um pretty happy. Uh one of the things I that that I was told was that they didn't have enough offensive linemen to, to basically field two teams. Um so you know that makes sense to me. 34-28 the final. And uh, it could have been that I, I really feel like if they <laughs> the the white team could have won like sixty to nothing. Well, look, it could be worse. You know, there, there, there was an eight day game on the other side of the state where it was not but field goals. <laughs> I mean, you know, and their MVP was like the field goal kicker. I mean, um. They'll announce the MVP, and I'm sure we'll get some stats here. I don't know when they'll send stats over, but uh, uh, those will be coming up. But, uh, you know, it's uh, – no, I didn't like the format either, but uh, the offense gets the stake, and the defense gets the beans. Good crowd, great crowds, 72,000-plus. Um probably even more, several thousand probably outside the stadium milling around. White steak, crimson beans. Mm. So close defense. Great day for the game too, man. 70,000, uh, like, 70, you know. You know? Um, so, yeah, 72,000 plus, man. That's that's great for an A-Day game. And, and uh, of course, it all started, I think uh, – uh, this afternoon with softball, they beat Texas A&M 2-0. I think baseball plays tonight. So folks can leave the uh, the football game. Bama's got uh, top-ranked Arkansas into town. So um, big weekend on the campus. We talked about that. Now, next game will be against Western Kentucky. On August 31st, and do you think they're going to be ready? I mean, are you comfortable with what you saw today? Where, where, where do you think Alabama needs to get some help? And where were you? Where did you feel like they did a good job in this game? What are you comfortable with, and what aren't you comfortable with? Comfortable with the offense. Um, they're going to score. They're going to score. Yeah. And uh, when they throttle that baby wide open, you know, like I say, I, I you know, I still think that they. Uh, they're not showing a whole lot. Yeah, um, Bernard could be MVP too. Uh, it's either going to be Bernard or Miller. Yeah. Um, defense, like you say, questionable. Um, but the portal—that's uh, what all that's for, starting Monday. Yeah. Um, one out of ten. How do you rank? Uh, how do you rank the game? I, I'm, I'm like at a, maybe a seven. Uh man, oh here's he's giving it to uh something. He's giving some stuff away. I might be NIL money. Six and five and six. Um I you know, uh I don't know. I mean I, I guess the offense looked good. Uh, the defense looks so bad in the first half that, you know, I, I I worry about all of those guys that left and us being able to stop the runs, you know, like the, the edge was there every time and then they were running straight over us. And I think that, um, that that's a problem. 
obviously. Uh, Hyperactivate says, uh, I think Lauderkin hits the portal on Monday after the game. He looked disappointed when congratulating Milrow. I, I don't know what is going to happen. We've got four quarterbacks, and you know a lot of them are pretty young. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, that you know, it's it's hard to speculate kind of what where they're at, you know, and how how willing someone is to stick around if they're not gonna play. But in that position, it happens fast, you know, like somebody gets hurt, and then next thing you know, like you're in. Um, you know, so I that's a that's a good question. I, I'm thinking that we're gonna have some guys transfer. I mean, if it's Lauderdon or somebody else, that's what happens in this day and age, you know, I wouldn't be, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Simpson transferred. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody transferred really, you know, if, if, if uh, Ryland Griffin transfers off of a final four basketball team where he played every game, you know, if you think you can go somewhere else and make money, you're going to do that. If some guys, not everybody, but you know, so it's not, it's not, um, you know, I don't I don't have any intel on any of these guys saying that they're transferring, but I, I just wouldn't be surprised anymore. Uh, I guess really like if Milro transferred, I'd be surprised, you know, like if yeah, yeah, if like Jam Miller transferred, you know, if I mean like Malachi Moore, you know. Okay, he's giving away stuff to everybody, so I don't know what those are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to follow it on radio. Cause I'm pulling double duty here today with, with the show, and then I'm running the radio broadcast here in Jasper. All right, let's see here. Um, Tim says um, snap still a concern. Saw a few bad ones. Tim, I I don't think so. Yeah, I I think that we're fine in that spot. You're talking about a guy, a new guy in there. He has a couple of bad snaps, but I, this we're going to be hyper focused on making sure that we have good snaps. So I'd be comfortable with that. When Brett and I were talking about that too, and I said the same thing. We're that's we're never going to have another problem like we had with Seth McLaughlin. We let that go on too long, and I just don't think that that's going to happen again. I think we're in good shape there. So yeah, a couple bad ones, but we're, you're, you're it's like um, we're we're so focused on it because it, it got so out of hand last year. Uh, Corey, great question, man. Great question. Cause I was thinking the same exact thing. Do you think the new defense that four, two, five, uh, has too many gaps in it? I don't know the answer to the swarm defense. I, I don't know enough about it other than, um, when I was watching the way that they were getting run past today, I was thinking to myself, like not a good look right now. And I was thinking, like, hey, we've got to do a better job of tackling. We got to do a better job of 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 you know picking up the intensity. And maybe that's all it was because the defense ended up having a, a good second half and the score was respectable. But there's just no way that if you're Alabama, you're going to let your defense get blown out like they were getting blown out. You can change play calls. You can change personnel. You can turn down the juice in a game to make sure that the score is respectable because it just felt like the offense just turned off. Um, you know, I mean, am I? Do you, do you think you see what I'm saying, Brett? Or you? What do you think? Um, you talk about the defense. Yeah, the, the the new defense that you know that swarm yeah, defense. Yeah, from, from <coughs> I wasn't impressed with it overall. Um, I got a lot of work to do, and um, does everyone does everyone get a participation trophy in this game, or what's the deal? There's the MVP trophy. It's got to be. So it is Jam Miller, the uh, Johnny Musso Award. There you go. Yeah, well, he he look, he had a huge game. I mean, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, every time he touched the ball, he was doing something. He's going to be a big part of this offense moving forward. 
Tim said that Elijah Elijah Pritchard looked Jack. The offensive line looked pretty good. The offensive line did look good. And that's that's a relief to me. I think to a lot of fans too. Adam said he said that they looked weak, man. I didn't see it like that. I, 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 I thought that the offensive line looked good, man. They they just seemed like they were blocking. They seemed like they were getting out there. Second half, I'm telling you, the second half of the game, it felt like they just hit the switch. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, here's what Bama Red said. Um, did I hear the D was incoherent today? Not sure. Oh, incognito. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, that I just didn't feel like the defense. Like every time there was a push, it the push went to the offense. Yeah. And t- until the second half, and it just felt like, hey, we're you know all of a sudden like after. Alabama's offense came in there and basically slapped the defense around. <laughs> you know, they you could tell that they were going to do some things to even that up. <sighs> Dustin said it's because they were mixing up the lines, and that could be it too. You know, you're playing against guys that you're not used to playing. But at, at the beginning of the game, when it was the best, the good on good, <laughs> it was good on bad. Hey, that's what it seemed like. And uh, Adam's right. The secondary is getting beat all day, it seemed like. Oh, and, and and we were afraid of that there in the, the DBs, Mick. That's what we've been talking about. Let, yeah. me, uh, dip, let me dip out. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump out. Yeah, no. And, and that's exactly it. The um, the secondaries definitely got – we got a lot of work to do. We lost the entire secondary. And so you knew that there was going to be growing pains in that department. But at the same time, you wonder how much you, you, some of your best players are true freshmen that aren't even there yet. And then on top of that, you may have to go out in the transfer portal and haul some guys in. And that's what I think they're going to do. I'm just curious to see who's available in that transfer portal because I would have really liked to have had the guys that we had stay. Although that's not, um, you know, that's that's not a possibility. Uh, Tim says, um, overall, I'm pretty satisfied. The team looked like the offseason fourth quarter program has been good. Yeah, guys looked healthy. Guys looked strong. I thought that, that uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, you know, f- um, Ryan says uh, some drop passes. Most of those were in the second half, too. Thought that the receivers did a really good job in the first half. Um, and and look, look, Luke, you're exactly right. And I felt like this is what happened in the second half of this game. That it's a scrimmage, and the coach didn't want to show you uh, anything. They didn't want to gleam anything from practice. They didn't want, and, and it felt like that offense was humming in the first half, and the defense had no you know, had no, uh, answers and they, they looked slower. They weren't able to really plug the holes. The beef, you know, Jam Miller was running by everybody was running through him when he had to, um, you know, I thought Milro and Simpson both looked good. And, um, you know, and I, it just kind of was one of those things where you're looking at your offense and you're up 30, 31, the zip and you're going, man, we can't, we, we don't want our defense to just get, you know, slapped around on this football field. Um, so yeah, very interesting matchup, but you guys get in the comment section. Tell me what you saw. What did you think? Um, you know, or is this any, are we paying more attention to this eight, a game because it's DeBoer's first eight, a game, you know, is that kind of part of this where we're going, Hey, you know what? We, we really haven't, um, you know, like we haven't seen, what he's doing, you know, and how much can you glean from any 8 day game? But I'll tell you what, in the, in the first half, I like the speed that the offense brought. Uh, I, I, you know, it was kind of why well, I thought that the offensive line did a good job in the first half. Jam Miller was great. Uh, Bernard was great. Some, some good plays. Ty Simpson is improving. And I think that is a good thing for Alabama. Uh, Defense has got to improve. Secondary's got to improve. 
the problem is, is you got good linebackers, but if you've got holes in other areas, you, it's not really going to show up. Uh, still like Caleb DeBoer though. And, and I mean, he's, he's running around the stadium, taking selfies and high-fiving people and signing autographs, man. The guy is just, he, he's a people pleaser. And, uh, very, very, very good dude. Um, and I see you guys are in the comment section right now, duking it out over Milro or Simpson. I'm telling you, uh, Simpson's the backup. I think that he solidified himself as the backup quarterback. We've heard that he's gotten better. Jalen Milro is going to be your starter, and then Milro is going to, uh, I mean, yeah, Milro is going to be the starter, and then Ty Simpson will be the backup, and that's kind of how it is right now. Um, I don't even know that it's a controversy. Jay's uh, talking about Richard Young. Man, Richard Young absolutely popped today to me. Speed, power, loved watching him. You're right. Run your ass over. I saw it too, man. I saw it too. Alabama's running back room may be the strongest uh, position group that they have. I mean, they've got four dudes, five dudes deep that they that they can run at you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you on this too, man. I think you go, you get if you can get somebody that can affect the pass rusher and stop the run from the transfer portal, you do it. You get you got Caden Proctor coming in on the O line. I think you got to get some secondary guys. You need help, cornerbacks, safety. You just need some help in that secondary. And I would, and I'd say this if there was the right playmaker at wide receiver, I'd probably take him too. Did you see that um, second drive? I think it was. It was Simpson. He threw an interception to Hubbard. Uh, and the referee got knocked down on the sideline and called it incomplete. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. 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 Um, and then that third drive where um, Bernard, uh, he had that 50, I think that thing was 52 or 53 yards at completion to the two-yard line to set up yet another touchdown. Um, like I say, him and Prentice, I mean, looked really good. Simpson threw a, a nice strike to Prentice there early in the game, too. So, um it was 31 nothing at, at one point. And we did get to see a little bit of Mac. By the way, official attendance, 72,358. Yeah. When do we do we get official stats from this game? That's what I'm waiting on. I, I mean, it's yeah. it's <laughs> it is a scrimmage. I mean Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know what we'll get uh today or or, or if we'll get anything, but well, take a look at this. I'm gonna roll past the um A Day game because up next. Bama against Western Kentucky, Bama against UCF, and then the first road game is at Madison, Wisconsin. How about that? Yeah, U U USF, USF, um, South Florida. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting if we did play Central Florida. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the Bulls. The Bulls. The Bulls. The Bulls. Maybe we'll uh... – Maybe we'll get that um, basketball kid from the Bulls. Uh, yeah, first real test will be Wisconsin on the road. You think that's a um, – I know it's not an SEC game, but you think that's a must win? I don't know. I mean, I think for DeBoer, you know, if you lose any of these games, and I know Michigan on the road is going to be a tough game for Alabama, but um, it, you're going to – people are going to – be pretty concerned, but it's a long season. I mean, Western Kentucky has teams that can be pretty good. Yeah. USF gave Alabama trouble last year. Don't forget that. Yeah. I know all the circumstances and everything that went into it, but still, you know, these are none of these, these, this isn't playing. Um, th th these are higher level, low level teams. You know, you know what I mean by that? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the it, higher of the mid tier teams. Yeah, right. And that that can if you you know, you mess around, they could beat you. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I I look at this schedule and I think, okay, so the the first three games you 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 got to win, but they're all tough. And then look when we get past that, Georgia and Tuscaloosa, Vandy, you know that's always a home game there. Uh, South Carolina, you know we'll beat them. At Tennessee, lost there last time. Missouri, they'll be Missouri again. I don't think they'll be any good. Then you got to go to Baton Rouge. Now this is this game right here, this Mercer game. You know that's Cupcake City, right? But then you go to Norman, Oklahoma. That's a tough game. Then guess what? Surprise! You get Auburn on the road. No, oh, no, no, at home. At home. Well, at Tuscaloosa. Home. Yeah. Home. I, I, yeah. Man, that's uh, – I think as far as the playoffs concerned, I think you, you really need to um, – you really need to to go on the road and beat Wisconsin. Tag and um, Bama, we said this too, brother. The yeah. format for this game was terrible. I mean, I, I told Brett, and you probably missed it, you go to these gymnastic matches and you never know what the hell's going on, right? Everybody to the beam and then somebody does something and then they put up a score and you don't know what that means. And it felt like that with the format to me. Yeah. The format sucked. I hated the format, but. Um, I don't think they had enough O linemen though to have two teams, right? I think you'll see that change. Like I said earlier, I think that'll change. Uh, um. I don't. I don't see him doing that again in the future. I think he had mentioned that this isn't something set in stone, but but uh, thirty four twenty eight the final. All right. Look, he's he's going to do a press conference. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Okay. Great. So give me a second here, and I'm going to throw it up on the screen. And we'll kind of get an idea of you know what what Kalen DeBoer thought, um, you know about the um, you know obviously thought about the the practice today, the scrimmage game, you know all, all that stuff, uh, you know what was going on there. So look, we're gonna have that here in a second. Throw them up. Let's hear what Kalen DeBoer has to say. Definitely curious. Yeah, me too. Back one, two, one, two. Y'all get back there. Check, check. Oh, there's Todd. <laughs> check, check. Level check. check one, two. Check, baby, check. Hey, uh, um, Mick, uh, we we uh, snagged that young blood kid. By the way, he. Oh, uh, so he did commit. He has committed to Alabama, the basketball player that we talked about this morning. Guys, if you did, if you don't know who we're talking about, Chris Youngblood from Tuscaloosa, basketball player, three-point specialist, Rylan Griffin is hitting the transfer portal, and this guy's uh, going to roll in and take his spot. And he he's a veteran who played at Valdosta for three years, and then down at South Florida, forty over forty percent from three. So that's exciting. But check that video out when we're done here. And yeah. we'll give you some background. I knew he was coming. I mean, you you don't you yeah, don't grow I, up in Tuscaloosa and not want to play on this basketball team for this coach, right? Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's the second player we've already gotten from the portal too. Here's All right, coach. let's jump off and let hear what coach says. All right, we'll do our best. Good afternoon. Uh, great day. Uh, fun day. Just all together. Um, obviously, it culminates with the scrimmage, and we're gonna go spend some time with uh, the guys and their families. Um, we got a chance to meet with the parents this morning, um, met with some some different groups, uh, got a chance to get Coach Saban and uh, in front of the team. That was pretty cool. Um, just get a chance to see him, uh, you know, and that's been since January, really, where that's happened. So um, really a lot of cool things uh, scrimmage wise, um, you know, shoot, if it was half, if it was a half, right, it'd been a tale of two halves. But, uh, you know, that's why I keep playing so many things that we're going to get to learn from from this scrimmage. Um, you know, depending on what side of the ball you're on. So I think overall, I think uh, I count. I was trying to keep track during, so I might be off, but I think we had six penalties between the two sides, which over the, whatever it was, 85 play, plays probably roughly. Um, kind of guessing that's that's not too bad. Uh, that's actually 
you know, improved each and every scrimmage. So, you know, I'm looking at those things uh, and where we're, we're improving, um, you know, rushing touchdowns uh, offensively, uh, the response defensively, uh, getting down early and, uh, and some of those things, um, you know, little things that the game brings uh, with the TV, you know, ESPN uh, broadcasting it and us uh, have working through TV timeouts and when to take the huddle and just talking through that, you know, right now, not that big of a deal if we're out there standing over the ball, but it will be this fall, you know, and just a lot of things uh, with guys who have never had that game action, uh, starting from the quarterbacks to, you know, the rest of the rest of uh, offense and defensive sides. So, um, you know, I thought, uh, thought it was a good overall scrimmage. Again, both sides kind of had their moments. So questions. Yeah, guys like Jam, Richard, Justin, I mean, what, what kinds of things have, that you see today that have been constant throughout the spring that you weren't surprised by? Jam, Richard, um, yeah, in the backfield, running backs. So, yeah, it was, uh, I thought they did a better job when they saw a hole today, they hit it, um, you know, and especially early on, there were some, some seams and they're not dancing, which means they're getting more and more comfortable with the schemes, the trusting of the offensive line. So I thought that was something, there was uh, a couple more tackles broken um, which goes both ways, right? You want to see those tackles made by the defense. There's more tackles for defense. There's more tackles broken early on in the scrimmage than what I've seen. We've been pretty sure with our tackling up until the early part of the scrimmage today. So, and then they responded and did a better job. How do you think Ty Simpson did today in terms of just command of the offense performance and just overall that back at quarterback position? How do you yeah. see the growth this spring? Yeah, I mean, you saw he does a great job back there. You know, you got full confidence uh, with a lot of those guys back there. But Ty, I thought, again, you know, he's just been consistent, you know, and gotten better um, throughout the spring. Um, never really had any drops in, in uh, each and every practice. So, I mean, you – you know, see what he does out there, and he's accurate. He knows when to put touch on it. I saw the one ball on the deep crosser. Um, you know, he's got good awareness. I thought all the quarterbacks did a better job um, of pushing the pocket at the right time. Uh, that's something I know we've been emphasizing. Rather just sit back there and let that rush on the edges get to you. You know, he had a good feel in all those ways. Um, I think you know, he's got a command of the offense for sure. We saw two young guys, Olaus and Rock, kind of working at different positions across different groups. What did you see from them today? Kind of what have you seen from them throughout spring as they've been moving around? Yeah, you know, and that's what we needed to do. Um, a little bit out of necessity, just with guys getting dinged up um, and just being careful too uh, with guys maybe they've been dinged up and just limiting the number, limiting the number of snaps up front. Um, but it was good for those guys to work in um, because you do see a difference with the execution. Let's talk the offensive line. Uh, when one or two new guys are inserted, you know, there's just a little bit another level of communication. So, you know, these are the moments you want to do that. Come this fall, we get into the into the season. We're playing games. Um, you know, you want to have be able to count, look back and and count on these moments where you know those guys were inserted. Um, you know, had to do do some do some things where it was different groups working together than really any of the scrimmages that we've had. So, um, good learning moment for you know not just them but the off, offensive line in general. Working together. We saw Jihad and Jaheem out there uh, in pads that didn't go through uh, the scrimmage today. So, what's their status and how are they doing? Yeah, they're doing good. Uh, if we had another week, for sure, if we had two weeks, but if we had another week of spring ball um, by the end of next week, I think. Again, I'm not the not the one that clears them, but I think they'd probably be both really close to being ready to go. So. Um, you just want to be careful, you know, and not, and not push it. Um, you know, uh, we don't want to set them back, and uh, they're right on pace. So uh, they're right where right where we expected to be based on what they each had, which are, you know, completely different types of injuries. Hey, Coach. Um, with Jeremy Bernard coming in, how have you seen him adjust over the course of spring, and what do you think of the day he had today? Yeah, I think he had a great day. I'm not sure if it was him right at the end there. Uh, I'd like to rake that one in, but um, – you know, he just, you know, you saw right away um, the one that sticks out to me where it was the catch and contact. He went and high pointed the ball, and um, that was him, right? I was trying to, yeah, it was way down the field. I thought it was him. Sometimes I'm watching a lot of things, but, um, you know, I thought that was a, you know, that's what he does. You know, he's a physical guy. He, uh, the ball's up in the air. It's his. Uh, he's got that mindset. Um, I think the guys, the quarterbacks in particular, really believe in him. And, uh, you know, he's been, you know, just, you know, he's a leader because that's just naturally what he what he does. Um, but 
you know, he's just really tried to work in with the receiving core, become one of them. And, uh, you know, he had some opportunities today and took advantage of him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's going to be a, a good one for us. That's for sure. Caitlin, how does uh, spring football in Alabama compare to Sioux Falls? <laughs> well, we go back so far, um, we couldn't even get to the point where you could go full pads back then uh, with the rules. So there was no – the spring game was uh, was thud tempo. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of lot of differences. Um, whatever it was, 70, 70 plus thousand is what I heard. 72,000. Um, we're just shy of that uh, there. Um, but, uh, you know, um, the cool thing is football is football. And what you see is, uh, at all the places you're at, um, guys that love to get out there and, um, you know, they're excited about their opportunity to go out and make plays and play the game they love. But, um, this was a special day, special day. Chase. Coach, early in the scrimmage, Jalen Milrow hit a couple of deep shots for touchdown drives that were really quick, just a few plays. The other quarterbacks scoring touchdowns, more methodical, 10 plays, 14, I think one of them. Um, did Jalen show that ability all spring to go 70, 80 yards, kind of like that with the deep shot? I think it's come along for all the quarterbacks. So that would mean, you know, with Jalen too, it's it's something that's progressed throughout the spring. Um, I don't think any any of our, you know, guys, because uh, it's, it's just timing, it's confidence, it's read progressions and things like that and identifying – and, uh, and, you know, there's my one on one. There's the guy where to put the ball. Um, so I think it's it's been something that's gotten to this point. And it was great to see him, you know, continue to take that next step and have that progression. So uh, the last week or two, I think that's been pretty consistent. You know, early on, I can't say any of the quarterbacks were just getting dialed in and and uh, those plays were being made. So um, that's what got the offense to a hot start. You know, with the scrimmage is those explosive plays. And, and I love that we can come out of the locker room. And, you know, kickoff happened and we're ready to go, you know, throw, catch. I thought the protection, um, you know, especially the first half to three quarters, uh, the protection was as good as we've had. Um, now, some of that's attributed to early on um, just kind of being a little bit more maybe vanilla defensively, things like that. Um, so, uh, you know, but the offense stayed ahead of the chains, stayed in, pos in positions where, you know, they could be dual threat, run pass options, um, you know, take your shots when they were there. Hey, Kenley, you've uh, you've got one spring under your belt here at Alabama. So what's resonated most about this place to this point, this team, and, and the challenge that lies ahead for you guys? Yeah, you know, I think today was probably the day um, where it just really felt, you know, you know, seeing the guys come on the walk um, of champions, just, um, just seeing that and feeling the energy and the excitement of what it would be on a Saturday. Um, you know, that was a lot of fun. And being in the locker room, uh, just the excitement, you know. And, um, you know, even today out there, I thought the guys, as hard as they're playing, um, I mean, there was times where, where they were out there just looking out for each other too. Uh, I don't care if it was, you know, offense to offense, defense to defense, but most importantly, offense and defense, you know, playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. Um, and, uh, you know, the energy, wanting to go out there and make the plays, but also not putting the team at risk, uh, you know, uh, just to go out there and make that one potential play that could put someone at risk. But uh, the energy, the excitement kind of leading up to uh, the spring game um, was something I think kind of hit me today. Along the same lines, I think you had a couple thousand more than Husky Stadium holds, and that's for the spring game. Did you ever kind of look around and say, wow, that on the football, you knew it was kind of a big deal, but was it kind of fun to see that in person? Yeah, I think, um, you know, caught – Caught that a little bit, I think, early on, just, uh, you know, enjoying that moment. Um, and I think as much as anything, trying to make sure the guys did too. And so, you know, you take it in when you're, you're you emphasizing the guys, hey, enjoy this moment. You know, you guys worked hard for this. And for a lot of these guys, this is their first spring game as well, their first A-Day. So uh, a lot of freshmen, some transfers. And so, you know, I made sure that, you know, they they relish this uh, this day. And, uh, you know, when you say those things, uh, you do it yourself as well. I know these things kind of go both ways, but no turnovers as an offensive guy, is that something that you kind of take delight in? Um, yeah, I mean, that would have been the difference probably in the scoring. Um, that's usually with the scoring system we use where you get the takeaways and the, the score evens up in a hurry. Um, the offense has done a pretty good job. Um, I don't think any of the scrimmages 
the quarterbacks threw a pick in all three of them. Now, there was times when the ball was on the ground um, and a couple scrimmages. So, um, you know, defense, it, you know, flying around um, has caused uh, some turnovers uh, throughout the throughout the spring and uh, got their share of uh, interceptions uh, in our different scrimmages that we've had that weren't part of the big three when we're when we're live. Um, so, you know, when when it matters most, uh, I guess, you know, you're, you're proud and and I noticed some ball security, too, you know, that uh, that I was impressed with. I think that's come a long way as I watched a drill on Thursday uh, in particular where, you know, it's a circuit that we run and the ball security for, for these guys. And, you know, you kind of hammer and scream at him uh, over and over for 15 practices. And you're like, man, I don't know if they're getting it. But you saw on Thursday, you know, how far we've come if you tip flip the film on from that drill compared to the first day. You hit on this a little bit in your opening, but what did you like about the response from the defensive side of the ball after they got down 31 to nothing and it's a little harder for them to score in this format? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and really just not worrying about the score. Uh, and I heard that uh, on that side, just not worried about, just continue to get better and uh, be in the moment, you know, um, get the guys on the ground when they when they had the chance to tackle and, uh, you know, just play the next play. And we say, we talk in terms of a 1-0 and mindset, so win the next rep. And uh, they they did that more, uh, you know, than the offense did in the second part of the scrimmage. I think the flip side is is there were some easy plays the offense just needs to make, catching the ball in particular. And uh, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, uh, those are some great learning moments that we will carry into the summer. Uh, you know, on both both sides, you know, why you don't stop playing and why you got to keep your head uh, and keep the focus and stay locked in uh, for the entire time you're on the football field. All right, thank you. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, man. Nice job. Uh, he had his first game out of the way. I know it's just a spring game, but what a good guy. I mean, I, I hope that he has success because he just is such a good person. You can feel it yeah. every time he's on the microphone. Yeah, he's got his own swag, too. He didn't uh, show up in the suit and coat like uh, Coach Saban <laughs> did. He had his own thing going, wearing the hoodie. <laughs> uh, uh, he got a little bit of that Alabama heat today, just a little preview of it. It was about 83 degrees at Tuscaloosa, but we mentioned before we went to the press conference, the, uh, the basketball recruiting news, but we got uh, breaking news of another recruit for the football team. Oh, nice. As, um, class of 2025 wide receiver and a guy we talked about a couple of days ago, Mick, uh, Lozier Brooks has committed to Alabama. Uh, 5'10", 180-pound fresh uh, wide receiver from uh, Millville, New Jersey. Uh, chose um, uh, the Tide over Tennessee and Kentucky. And uh, so that's a little bit of recruiting news. Uh, that's Because uh, we had a lot of recruits on campus uh, today, a lot of guys visiting. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, uh, a few more you know, commitments maybe that would be nice, but uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, coming out of coming out of uh, Tuscaloosa today. And 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 Mick, I, I have to share this with you because it, I I found it kind of funny. A year ago, uh, we saw the crowd of seventy two thousand, but a year ago, this was the view, and it it went viral. Do you remember this? This was the view of the Washington spring game. Oh boy. <laughs> uh quite the contrast my friend yeah yeah way different world right Seventy-two thousand today and uh put it up there again what is that you know like 500 maybe i mean even that uh yeah what's uh i forgot all about this this went viral on athlon and and some of the other sites and um but that was the view from Washington last year, and now he and one year later, uh, he's in Tuscaloosa with seventy two thousand people. Yeah, what a day though! Uh, first off, to to get uh, Lazare Brooks to commit to Alabama, uh, he's listed as a three star uh, in some publications, and is he a four star in any of them? can't remember if he was yes, uh yes he, yeah he, he, was, he was that kid that was uh some people had him as a three-star some had a four and and uh his stock will go up uh this year too 
Yeah, he. Hey, look, forget about the stars. Let me run through the the list of teams that he had an offer from. Okay, you guys ready? Rutgers, Penn State, Georgia, Syracuse, USC, Oregon, Tennessee, Texas A and M, Kentucky, South Carolina, Nebraska, Maryland, Boston College, Louisville, West Virginia, Temple, Connecticut, James Madison, and Pittsburgh. So he's yeah. a, a, a a speedy, super speedy wide receiver, five nine and a half, and one hundred and seventy pounds out of Millville, New Jersey. Um, connected with this staff, and and I guess you know, like uh, Jamarcus Shepard was his primary recruiter. Um, you know, talking about a guy that's over eight hundred miles from Tuscaloosa, but for him to jump on and join this staff. I told we were talking about this all week. We kept saying, watch. And this is just the beginning. You're going to have more guys jump on because now that they've they've been recruited, they like this staff, they go out, they see this offense, they see the program, they see 72,000 for a spring game. There's not 72,000. Let me run through this list again. All right, Brett, I'm going to do this for you and you guys hanging out at home, okay? All right, Rutgers doesn't isn't going to have seventy two thousand in any of their games, right? Uh, no. Syracuse the same thing. Um, Kentucky, I don't know. I mean, would they? I mean, I guess football has kind of got more popular there, but um, you know, Boston College, you know, Temple. I don't know how many Louisville's going to have more than more than Connecticut and Pittsburgh and James Madison. Although James Madison's got a pretty good little program. Um, yeah, but seventy-two thousand people's not showing up, and I mean, and that's just for, for a, a spring, spring game. game. For a spring game, I yeah. mean, uh, when that place is packed and it's rocking, uh, it is a different atmosphere. It is is something. Well, we all know. I mean, we're all Alabama fans. Uh, it's some something like none of it, you know. So that's that's crazy. So so not only today did we pick up uh, Chris. Uh, the young blood. Uh, young blood, the uh, the basketball player. We get lots of Brooks, the wide receiver. Yeah. Um, and uh, four star, according to ESPN. And you know, like you said, he'll he'll be on everyone's radar. Um, so what a what a day, man. I, well, maybe yeah, Bama baseball can beat Arkansas. Wouldn't that make uh, it wouldn't that wouldn't that put a nice cap on it? Uh, hopefully they'll have a big crowd there. Um, uh, at what is that, the Joe and um. Where they'll, you know, uh, they need it, man. Number one, Arkansas into town. Jeez. So here, here's the here's a little background on Chris Youngblood, too, guys. I mentioned that you can go back and watch our show, but 15 points per game, 42% from three. He's leaving uh, South Florida to join Alabama. So I guess with, um, you know, with with Griffin out, it didn't take long for someone to say, hey, you know what, I'd like to go to the Final Four. I'd yeah. like to be on a team that can win a national championship. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh Yeah, this is great, man. Um Brooks has 3,355 yards receiving and 51 touchdowns in his career. Both are South Jersey records. How about that? How about that? Also a max a max speed, and when you're and then when they're when they're clocking it at miles per hour, Mick, I, I don't know how many miles per hour you run, <laughs> and and damn sure don't ask me how many I run. Right, twenty two miles an hour. This guy, yeah, in your car and drive twenty two miles an hour. It may sound like it's not much, but if you're running twenty two miles an hour. The only way I'm running 22 miles an hour is if there's a big car, big truck chasing me. Yeah, yeah. Like when you were in, uh, you were growing up in Biola Battery, and those mean kids were chasing you with their pickup truck. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, <laughs> they're throwing stones at you. Throwing stones at me, man. Run, but, Forrest. But uh, yeah, that's you know that's huge. The basketball commitment is huge. Uh, yeah, that that really puts a good cap on a, on on a good day. Like I say, you know, bottom line is um we we got our first look like we wanted. Um 
I think it was very vanilla. Uh, we have a lot of room to improve, obviously. Um, but I think we'll be ready for that first game, and we've got a uh, we got a lot of time to work on some things. And I'm telling you, you if you haven't subscribed to this channel, uh, you need to do that because this week it's going to start getting really interesting because it's a two way street when you talk about that transfer portal portal opening up on Monday. Yeah, right. Well, you we weren't ready when Nick Saban retired, and how could? No. You? And it was great to see Coach Saban on the sideline. Um, and he, and shaved because I saw a, a picture of him unshaved and he, and he looked a lot older. It was good to see him kind of back shaved with, you know, his suit on. Um, <laughs> like well, the, I mean, the guy's retiring. Uh, cut him some slack, man. If he, if he doesn't want to, if he doesn't want to shave, that's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. But I like, he looks younger shaved. He, looks he does. Like, he does. He does. He, he does. scared me. I was like, Whoa. Yeah. Like he uh, went in a time machine or something, but um, yeah. Good to see him back out there again uh, for today's game. But we got to look at Kalen DeBoer. Your comments on what he said in the press conference answered all the questions, um, and it and it really did seem like he I he was talking about Milrow hit some deep passes early. You know, I see some of you guys are like me. You feel like uh, Simpson played well. Some of you guys don't think he played that well. I I think he's improved a lot. Uh, you know, over the last year. He's the boar seemed to think he's gotten better. Um, but it just felt like to me they went very vanilla after the offense was just ripping the defense apart. And he was saying yeah. it was missed tackles. Yeah, I mean, but there wasn't even that. I mean, he he talked about the running backs hitting the holes, and I noticed that too. I mean, those guys look like they were running for daylight. And if and if there was a crack, they were gonna hit it. Yeah, I wonder what Saban thought of that defense. <laughs> Probably hmm. not happy, right? Probably, probably not happy. Uh, I would love to be a um, a fly on the uh, in the vehicle of Miss Terry and and Coach driving home after this game, just to see what he says about the off uh, the defense. Do you think though that he's looking at it like that, or do you think he sees the positives? It's so hard to tell with him. Because he sees football so much differently than that. But I don't know how you could be happy with the defense in that first half. No, and you're right. I mean, he knows more football than, you know, than anyone. Um, uh, and, I, you know, and obviously he's, he's, he's trying to be hands off. But, um, you know, I, you know if, <laughs> I'm sure that Coach DeBoer talks to him from time to time. And um, I don't know what to, he, yeah, that's, that's why, that's why I was saying I would love to pick his brain about what he saw because for the first time he has been, he watched a football game from a suite. Um, You know, he's always been on the sidelines coaching. Yeah. Right. Uh, what kind of experience is that for him? I bet you he uh, that'd be like going to like a grocery store for the first time or something. I don't know. You think he, Weird. you think he, uh, you think he really watched and paid attention or do you think he like entertained and talked and took pictures and stuff? I think he wanted to watch. Um, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. There's too much coaching him, man. He, he had to watch, but I, you know, it depends on who's in the suite with him. I think it looked like, Nothing but family. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I think that you and I felt like quarterback uh, is a good spot for Alabama. Uh, Lonergan came in, and you know he was he was good. Um, Austin Mack had a lot of pressure on him when he was in there. Um, I, I thought he was probably the guy that had the least success today. Running back wise, I thought Alabama looked really good in that spot. Very strong running backs. Jam Miller was the game's MVP. He, and it was it was going to be between him and Bernard, right? But he he yeah. won that. Richard yeah. Young looked good. I mean, everybody that they threw into that running back um, room did a nice job to me of uh, you know of hitting holes and. Uh, I thought I thought that the offensive line was was good, and then you know they they started to cycle in a lot of different players in those spots. But 
Uh, I think that the offensive line is going to be a strength for the team. We saw a few bad snaps, but this wasn't a, um, you know, this, this was a, you know, you've got Parker Brailsford who's eventually going to snap. And I thought that this, I, I didn't think the snaps were that bad. We didn't have any go over anybody's head. You know, none of them ended up 20 yards down the field. There were a couple low ones, but still, I mean, you're talking about Brockermeyer, like, you know, <laughs> snapping for the first time as the center, right? Yeah, I like Scott's comment. This team is like a mill that consists of a bunch of sides. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this or not. Former and almost current football player uh, Caden Proctor was at the A-Day game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if we mentioned that or not. Well, and he'll be officially joining the team again on Monday, right? Yeah, but uh, a, a few statistics for you. Jalen Milrow, two for seven, 88 yards. Ty Simpson, six for nine, 68 yards. Lonigan eight for 12, 67 yards uh, coming in uh, with the quarterback room. Oh, nice. Is there, can we pull that up or is that? That's, uh, that's just, that, that's the only thing I've got. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's, there's no. There's no real statistics. And and also, I, uh, we need to mention, I guess, the place kicker. I think that's a, a, a spot that we really need to uh, shore up. Yeah, yeah. Missed a, missed a field goal today. What what was – do you have the official statistics on kicking? I don't know. I don't have – I don't think they're going to send anything out, or at least okay. they haven't yet. Well, I remember a, there's a made field goal, and I, I remember a missed field goal. But look, Will Riker yeah. is going to be an NFL, yeah. going to be an NFL kicker, you know. And if and if he if he does what he did at Alabama, he's going to be a good NFL kicker. Um. So, Bellinfont, Talty, and Shoeback are the three kickers mm -hmm. what great kicker names by the way <laughs> bellinfont talty and shoeback bellinfont uh they, they they all attempted field hey goals hey <laughs> <laughs> uh they all attempted field goals or extra points shoeback is the one who hit the 27 yard try okay uh, Bellafont, Bellinfont made from 23. Okay. And Talty is the one who missed. He must be trying out for the long, long kick because he, he tried the 47 yarder and he missed it. Right. Yeah. So I said, so I said, I didn't have any stats for the kicker, but I lied. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, and that's <laughs> going to be interesting too, to see kind of yeah. how that, you know, that's an area where we really haven't had any concern for a long time. No, and Will Reichert was out there, and it's like uh, money. Yeah. You know, bet on it. But I remember the days where, man, when Alabama would line up for a field goal. Oh, I you would held have your breath. I, I, yeah, I, I would walk out of the room. Yeah, hide under the table. Hide under the table, do something, because, man, I just – you didn't know how it was going to go. No. And that, you know – that is such an important position because that could that could win you or lose you some ball games so fast. I know. I don't know how Auburn always has good kickers. You know. Yeah. They. Yeah. I don't. I don't either. They got that kid from Auburn High School who, like I said earlier in the show, um, I think he accounted for like ninety percent of their points in their spring game. So, like I say, it could be worse. Yeah. Uh. So we we talked about the quarterbacks, the running backs. How about wide receivers? Um. You know, Bernard was the 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 guy. Prentice made a nice catch. Yeah. I, I saw there was some drop passes too of uh, some guys that you know that might not even really you know they're they're going to have a tough time getting on the field, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm starting to get a little bit at a time. It's like they're trickling uh, stuff down. Uh, defensively on the side uh, on the defensive side of the football. Jeremiah Alexander had five solo tackles. Um, let's see. Dre Kirkpatrick was the one who had the interception after an all. That's the play that they called the defense offsides. And we got to see the chain. 
Did you see the chain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, we didn't get to see uh Jihad Campbell or Jaheim Ot uh, Otis. They were yeah. in uniform, uh, but they didn't participate today. Yeah. So that's a couple of guys that we didn't we didn't get to see. Right. Uh but Emmanuel uh, Henderson saw him drop some passes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I was hoping to see um uh Odom and I I don't remember seeing him. Caleb Odom. Seen, yeah, I don't remember seeing him either. Um Hmm. Uh, let's see if they, um, I thought for sure they would, they would put out some stats probably as soon as we go off the air here, they'll, they'll send it over. That's about to par for the course. <laughs> so what do they do? Just they're just with this normally the way that we get stats guys is that there's a tracker, you know, that school has a tracker. ESPN has a tracker. Fox has a try. Everybody's got a tracker for these games. Um, it's, it's kept in house. And then I, what are they just, are they emailing it or is somebody posting them? Uh, normally they email the thing, but I haven't gotten an email. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on my email. We're worried about, uh, we're worried about getting stats and world war threes breaking out with Iran and Israel. No, oh, that's no good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Pentagon confirming uh, that uh, Israel is officially under attack by Iran. And this is, um, I don't like to get political, but I just wanted to break that because it, uh, some scary sights being shown on, on the news channels. Okay. Well, um, let's see here. So we kind of roll through, um, just kind of rolling through, looking for some stats. Okay, Tim says uh, Odom actually had a had a catch. So, oh, okay, all right, good, 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 okay, good. It's it's like even even Coach DeBoer was like, "Hey, man, um, you know we got you know it's it's hard to the guy jumped up and high pointed it, and it's like, <laughs> hey, did you high point? You know who was that? You know, it's like you got yeah. so many different things going on without the uh, you know without your official stats. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what. A little yeah. hard to tell, a little hard to tell, but uh, at least you know the the defense showed up late in the game. You know, toward the end of the first half, they kind of woke up a little bit and and made it a game. Um, don't uh, do we know the uh, what happened? Uh, um. Did we have other spring games today? Of course, of course, Alabama's is the only one that matters. But I think Ole Miss had their spring game today. Here's a here's a picture of Auburn's spring game. See that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, not a lot of excitement there. Not 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 a ton of excitement. And uh, Lane Kiffin brought in the hot dog eater. Um. Oh yeah, Joey Chestnut. Yeah. Uh, the Grizzly games over there. Nice. We, we got to, uh, we got Willie and, and, uh, they got Joey Chestnut, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Roll Tide Willie. All right. Well, look, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Big day. You know, you talk about, uh, again, the final score was, uh, 34, 28. The Crimson was the offense. I mean, the defense white was the offense white absolutely tore them up in the first half. And uh, it just kind of felt like the offense w was, uh, you know, kind of dialed back in the second half. Probably didn't want to show too much, and and, right. and didn't want to really beat beat the defense up too bad. But um, good day in Tuscaloosa. Uh, obviously, uh, two big commitments: Watsier Brooks, wide receiver, four star, according to ESPN, a, a, a speed burner from New Jersey, commits to Alabama right after the game ends. And I know everyone talking about Rylan Griffin, uh, you know, going out and he'll probably get a big payday for transferring off of a final four team. But Alabama goes out and gets Chris Youngblood, 15 points, 42 percent from three commits to Alabama. and He's going to join the tide. So, um, hey, 
you know, it, the way that Nate Oates has this thing rolling right now, if you don't want to be here, somebody else does. And uh, it, it doesn't seem to matter. You know, he's going to be able to go out and bring in the kind of guys he wants. And Youngblood will have one year of eligibility, but he's got a ton of experience. And he 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 fills the bucket up, and that's exactly the type of players that Nate Oates wants. You either shoot three or you get to the bucket. Co-AAC Player of the Year. This guy is the real deal. He's a he's a hooper. He's a baller. Man, I'm I'm so excited about football and basketball and everything, man. I want to I want to just say roll tide to everyone. Hey, it roll. was great, great to see football on TV, man. That's right, guys. Uh, don't forget you can listen to Brett every day on WJLX Radio and Jasper. Uh, he does the morning show, the Brett Elmore Show. And uh, don't forget that if you use this promo code fifteen percent, you get uh, or you, the the promo code Bama Tailgate, you get fifteen percent off fourth and thirty one. And we will talk to you guys again tomorrow. But roll tide and thanks for hanging out with us. And um, a great great day to be from Alabama. I feel like I want to just chant that over and over again. Or maybe <laughs> I should say it's great to be from Alabama. But roll tide, guys, and thank you. 